Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis, back in the studio. Um, it's kind of late today, so I don't want to go outside. It's too dark. And um, anyway, let's get on with this message. Today's message is called How to Rise from Simp to Pimp. That's right, how to rise from simp to pimp. Now, I'm not gonna teach you guys how to pimp hoes or or get girls in the sack. You know, that's not what this message is about. If that's what you're about, go on to the next video. But you know what? Stick around because this is gonna be better than that next video. Anyways, here we go. This message is gonna um, be geared towards, you know, how to not get taken advantage of, you know, and, and, and how to be a champion, right? How to be a strong warrior and, and, and specifically how to dust yourself off when you lose a battle and get back up and go win the war. You know what I'm saying? How to rise from simp to pimp. That's what we're talking about today. You know, and the reason I'm making this video is because um, just recently, last night, you know, I watched a really good movie called Creed 2. Creed 2. Um or Rocky 8, whatever you want to call it, whatever it is, right? It's a, it's a, it's a offshoot of the Rocky series called Creed 2. Um, now, this video isn't going to be a review of the movie, but um, for the sake of my message today, how to rise from simp to pimp, um, I'm going to have to spoil the movie, all right? So if you haven't seen the movie and you want to go see the movie, um, pause this video, come back to the video, go watch the movie, and then come back, right? But, um... Uh, do I recommend seeing the movie? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm talking about it, right? Um, it's not my favorite movie. Um, it's not that bad. It's not that, it's not like an amazing movie. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend watching it with the kids, right? Um, it's, I think it's too deep for the kids. But, um, the reason I'm making this video is because that movie just had so many lessons and similarities um, from my past relationships that I just I just wanted to share with you guys, you know, so that we could all be stronger men and women, I guess, if you're watching, uh, all one of you, uh, um, going into relationships in the future, right? I wanted to teach you the lessons that I learned from it. Anyway, what I'm going to do here in this video is I'm going to go through the movie, you know, each part of the movie, scene by scene, not, you know, not get dissected, but I'm going to explain how the parts that I uh, remember, you know, I'm going to highlight those parts of the movie and, and, and explain the lessons that I took away from it. And hopefully by the end, you know, we'll all be more wiser um, and more educated on how to spot a hoe so that we don't make the mistake of becoming a simp and wasting our time and our money and our energy, you know, and we can go find ourselves a virtuous woman, right? And be a pimp, right? And, you know, I'm not talking about a literal pimp. We're not going to be pimping out our wives, right? But, you know, like I said, uh, the word pimp just means champ, right? Just the champion, right? Not the not the loser, you know what I mean? So let's begin, right? Um, the movie Creed 2 uh, basically um, starts out with two main characters. Uh, you have Creed, who's the protagonist, right? Um... He's the he's the heavyweight champion. He's 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 the he's the hero of the story, and then you have uh, the uh, what do you call it? The antagonist, um, uh, Drago, who's the he's, he's he's the underdog boxer who's not really an underdog because he's really strong. He's really good. Uh, he's a good fighter. He's a he's um he's a force to be reckoned with. If you know what I'm saying. Um, but he's a street boxer. He's not a professional, right? Like Creed, Creed's the top of the game. He's the champ of the world. He's in the professional scene. Anyway, what ends up happening is Drago challenges uh, Creed, the champion, to a fight, right? But the thing is, it's not really an honorable challenge. It's more of a provoking challenge, almost like he's taunting him, right? Like he's straight up dissing him, disrespecting him, um... And it's like he's trying to get a rise out of him, right? And, and it kind of reminds me of, of the Pharisees in the Bible when, when they would try to tempt Jesus with a question, right? Like, for example, you know, they would ask Jesus something like, you know, is it lawful to pay taxes, right? 
And 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 they they they're not asking him this question like because they want to know the answer. They're tempting him, right? It's a loaded question, right? It's like, whoa, you know, how dare you ask Jesus something like that, right? But you know, unlike Jesus, Creed let his pride get in the way, right? Jesus, he answered real cool, smooth, kept everything legit, right? But Creed, his pride got in the way. And 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 even though he went to his trainer, Rocky, Rocky told him no. Do not take this fight. It's not a good idea. Let it go. You don't need to mess with this guy. And Creed asked him, "What? Why? You think you think Drago's a better fighter than me?" And 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 Rocky's like, Rocky, his trainer's like, "Nah, man, that's not what I'm saying at all. In fact, what I'm saying is, you know, you don't understand. Like, you're too good for this guy, right? Accepting this fight would be like." I mean, you're almost disrespecting yourself by even accepting this fight. You know what I mean? And 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 the important part that I remember is, you know, uh, Sylvester Stallone, who's great in this movie. Um, you know, Rocky. He, he he said, you know what? Drago doesn't have anything to lose, right? And that makes him dangerous. That's why you don't want to fight this guy. He's dangerous. He can hurt you. You know. In other words, he kind of told him, hey, if if you have nothing to gain by accepting this fight. It's, it's it's just basically a pride match at this at this point, right? But you know, Creed he wouldn't listen to him, and he said, "You know what, Rocky? I'm still I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this fight. Are you gonna help me or not?" And Rocky's like, "If you're gonna take this fight, I'm out of it, right? I'm not even gonna help you because this is this is not a good fight that you should be taking. This is nothing that I want to get involved with." And Creed's like, "Well, I'm going for it anyway." So he went and got himself a new trainer. They train for the fight, and then and then the fight comes, right? The day the fight comes, and you know what I wanted, what I what I what I really learned here is that you know it reminded me of my past relationship, kind of right. Like you could almost say that I was in the simp phase, right? You know, the sucker who's who's going after something that I had no business going after. You know, it it was almost a disrespect for me to even try to approach this woman. You know what I mean? Because you know. I, you know that's that's what a simp is, right? It's a guy who doesn't realize that you know you you have nothing to gain from this hoe, right? She ain't gonna give you nothing, right? You uh, you have nothing. Just like Creed, he had nothing to gain from fighting Drago. It, um, it was a, just a pride match, you know what I mean? Just like that old saying goes, you can't turn a hoe into the housewife, you know. And that's what a simp's doing. A simp's trying to turn a hoe into a housewife, and he ends up getting burned. That's why we call him a simp, right? Because when I got into my relationship, you know, this girl, she had less to lose than me. You know, you could call her the hoe and, and because she had nothing to lose, you know. And you, yeah, you can call me the simp because I was the fool who tried to get into a committed relationship with the hoe, right? Because I remember, you know, when, when I first met her, I was like, yo, let me, let me, uh, how about uh, I introduce myself to... I introduce myself to your parents, you know, I'm going to treat you properly like a lady, I'm going to take you out, you know, and 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 I'm trying to do things like, you know, the standard way, right, and and then she's just a hoe, and she's like, nah, you know, you don't need to meet my parents, you know, in fact, I'm not even interested in anything long term, why don't we just, why don't we just sleep together, no, no strings attached, and you know, things like this should have been a red flag, I should have been like, I'm out of here, I'm going to leave you um, where I found you in the gutter, you, you hoe where you belong, right? But I was stupid. I was like Creed, you know, I was filled with pride and I was like, how dare this woman tell me that she doesn't want a relationship with me, right? Who does she think she is, right? I'm not good enough for you. And, um, and, 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 and just like Creed, it's like, bro, like, <laughs> What are you messing with this trash for, right? Like, you shouldn't be insulted. You should just walk off like a pro, like a really pro does, like a pimp does, you know what I mean? Just say, hey, you ain't worth my time anyway and get this step in, right? But anyway, um, just like Creed did, you know, I wanted to convince myself, nah, I want to prove myself, you know? Once she gets to know me, you don't understand, she's going to change because she'll see how good I am and... Um, just like what ended up happening in the Creed, you know, when he finally got in the ring. When So when he finally gets in the ring with Drago, what happens? He gets his butt kicked, man. He just gets whooped, smacked around like he's nothing, right? 
Um, and, and instead of Creed just admitting, hey, I'm getting my butt kicked and throwing in the towel, Creed Creed just doesn't let his pride go. You know, he's 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 arrogant and he wants to just keep fighting and just keep fighting. And this guy's throwing low blows and, and what ends up happening is Creed en ends up getting injured. He ends up getting hurt real bad. He ends up getting knocked out, broken ribs, broken jaw, bruised kidneys, head trauma, concussions, you name it, right? He just got whooped and got injured. He got hurt bad. And you know, just like me in my relationship, you know, I overextended myself. I overextended myself. I didn't know when to quit. And I got myself injured. You know, just like Creed did. I had a broken heart, broken wallet, uh, lost my virginity. I mean, you know, Creed didn't know when to throw in the towel and neither did I, right? And we both ended up getting knocked out and injured way more than we should have been, right? But here's the thing. Creed didn't lose the fight. Creed did not lose that fight technically because the, uh, the referees uh, said that Drago fought so dirty that he was disqualified. And you know, that resonated with me because I felt the same way when, when we broke up, right? The, even though the, bro uh, the woman left me, I lost the woman, right? And But I didn't feel like I had lost everything, right? Because I was like, you know what? I, I, I lost, I got beat up, but you know what? She cheated, she lied, she played dirty. So, I mean, did I really lose? Yes and no, right? But, but you know, she didn't have the moral high ground when she left. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. And, you know, I really identified with Creed at this point because he was beat, he was injured, he was in the hospital, and I could feel, and I, and I knew the pain that he was going through, you know, the humiliation of defeat, uh, especially getting defeated by this street punk you know what i mean you know creed didn't know how he lost like he couldn't wrap his mind like how did this this loser beat me you know what i mean i'm the champ i'm the i'm the champ and and he beat me how is this possible and and uh because he knew he was better than him right and he couldn't figure out why did i lose you know and the same thing happened to me when i got broke uh when we broke up i was like how did that happen? How did I lose? You know, like I'm, I'm like the most honorable guy that I know. How did I lose this? Right? I couldn't figure it out. It took me a while. But what ended up happening next was, you know, Creed, um, he had to defend his his title, right? He had to defend his uh, championship belt. And what happened is, uh, his trainer, um, who trained him for Drago, came up to him and said, "Hey, man." Uh, you need to take a fight, any fight, uh, to defend your uh, title. And um, his trainer, you know, he he, he said, uh, you know, should I set you up with an easier fight? You know, something that you can win no problem. And, you know, Creed took this as an insult and it did not go well with him. Uh, I don't think he ever talked to that trainer again. Because um, he, he was like, nah, I'm better than Drago, you know. So he didn't really give the trainer an answer, yes or no. Um but I identified with this too because, you know, just like him, after my breakup, you know, I was tempted to, um, after my breakup, to to get in relationships with with easier hoes, right? Like uh, I could I could easily go pick up an easier hoe, no problem, right? But I was like, nah, that's an insult to me, right? Like that's insulting me. I'm better than that, right? So I stayed away from the hoes and the riffraff, and I and I was like, nah. I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to the um, gym, <laughs> so to speak, and and I'm gonna get the training and figure out why did I lose, and I'm gonna, cause I know I'm better than that. And anyway, um, eventually Rocky came around. You know, eventually Rocky came around to talk to him, and 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 they had a discussion on um, why he lost the fight. And Rocky told him, he said, you know what, you didn't lose to Drago because he's better than you. He said. You lost because you tried to fight him with your normal fighting style, right? That's not going to work with Drago. You have to change your style up. You have to change your mentality up. That's why you lost because you weren't in the right mental state and you didn't um, use the right style of fighting, right? And, you know, just like me, I realized, you know, the reason I lost isn't because this hoe was better than me, right? It was because... I was testing this hoe. 
or, or, or not testing, I was treating this hoe like she was a virtuous woman, you know? That's what a simp is. A simp is, is a guy who treats a hoe like a housewife, you know what I mean? And, and, and what, I, what I had to realize is I had to change up my style. If you're going to beat a hoe, you have to change your style. You can't use the same, uh, you can't treat a virtuous woman, a God-fearing woman, the same way you treat a hoe. Otherwise, you're going to fall into simp mode, right? And I'm trying to make you guys pimp mode, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, buying, buying a hoe flowers, being kind, that doesn't work, man. That ain't going to win you a hoe. I ain't going to turn a hoe into a housewife, so... But remember, guys, this isn't a video teaching you guys how to slam and scram and get hoes in the sack. That's not what I'm doing here. But um, anybody could do that. That's, e that's easy, you know what I'm saying? There's no honor in that, so that's not what I'm about. But anyway, back to my story. One of the key things that Rocky told Creed when they were discussing why he lost was this. He said... Um, because there was a scene, you know, um, they, they actually were at the hospital um, because Creed was having a child. His, his, his first child was being born. And, and unfortunately, you know, that poor little baby, uh, she was born deaf, deaf in both ears. And, and Creed was freaking out and he was telling Rocky, well, you know what, you know, uh, we're going to run more tests. And you know what, um, the, the doctors don't, don't know for sure if she's deaf, you know, she, if we run more tests, you know, things aren't, might turn out okay. And then Rocky told him, wait a second, bro. Like, what if she is deaf? So what? Like, what are you afraid of? You know, she's not going to feel sorry for herself. Nobody else is going to feel sorry for her. Why are you feeling sorry for her? Why are you so afraid that she might be deaf? You know, is this crippling? Is, is this, like, um, going to make anything less? Are you going to love her any less? You know what I mean? And, and, you know, this really struck me again because I related to what he was trying to teach Creed. You know, what I had to learn in my past relationship was this, you know, that you can't be afraid to lose, you know? As I look back at my relationship and I think, you know, I was scared of losing this girl, you know, I was scared uh, that I wasn't going to be able to have a relationship, you know, I wasn't going to be able to have sex, you know, but you know, it wasn't, it was the fear of her telling me that I don't want you for a relationship. I don't want you as a husband, you know, and that fear is what held me back mentally from doing what I had to do. You know what I mean? You see, just like Creed had a fear that Drago was going to beat him, right? It, 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 um, this fear, uh, I had this fear that this hoe had something of, of value that I was missing out on, right? Just like Creed in the first fight, he didn't realize that this fighter was such a scumbag, he didn't even need to take the fight, you know? And that's what I should have known in the beginning, you know? I should have known that this hoe... She's just provoking you to sleep with her, bro. You know, she doesn't love you. She doesn't care about you. You know, to prove... she, uh, I just wanted to prove... Uh, like, we were having, like, a pride match, you know? Like, I shouldn't have even given her the time of day. Just like Creed should have just not even taken the fight, you know? Because if you take that fight, you already lost, man. You already lost. You're already kind of, like, saying, Oh, I'm scared to lose this scumbag. It's like, this is already a scumbag. Just leave him alone, dude. He's, he's a loser. You know what I mean? Creed didn't understand his own, his own value. You know, he thought too highly of Drago. You know, that's, that's what we do sometimes when we simp for women. When we simp for these hoes, right? You know, we judge a woman by her looks, right? Uh, uh, and maybe by the way she's treating us and talking smooth to us, right? And we don't realize that that's not what's valuable, you know? Because a hoe, she's going to rely on her looks and her charms. But you see, Creed... He had to learn how to accept defeat. He had to learn to not be afraid of losing, you know? Not because he's a worse fighter, you know? But because some people aren't worth fighting at all. They're not even worth your time, you know? And that's what I had to learn. You know, that some women, they ain't even worth having. They ain't even worth uh, talking to. You know, sure, they may look good on the outside, and they may talk a good game, but on the inside... They're trash, man. They're absolute trash, and you have no business talking to them. Even talking to them is um is 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 no good for you. You know what I'm saying? So what ended up happening in the end is, you know, Creed eventually 
accepted another title match from Drago, right? Because he technically didn't beat him the first time because he was disqualified. So they they had a rematch, or if yeah, a rematch. And but make no mistake about it, guys. You know, there's gonna be a hoe. If you, if you defeat one hoe, there's gonna be another hoe coming along. You know, there's gonna be a rematch. So. There's going to always be another hoe to come along and tease you and taunt you into getting into the ring with her. You know what I mean? And, 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 it, and it might just be that little pop-up on your, on your internet browser that, that you need to just click X on, you know? Or it might be that hoe who walks by uh, down the street who uh, you want to lust your eyes after, you know? And overvalue her body, you know? And says, step into the ring with me. Check me out, you know? That's what she's saying. You know, but don't step into the ring with her, guys. Do not even look at her. Don't even look at her. If you recognize she's a hoe, look the other way. Run the other way. You have no business with her. She's trash. You know, because when you do, when you accept that fight, when you look at her with your eyes, you're going to get beat. You're going to get beat just like Creed got beat in that first fight, you know. You have to do what Rocky said. Don't accept that fight. Just throw in the towel. She's not worth your time. Leave her alone. Look away. Walk away. You know, that's how you treat a hoe. You know, you avoid them. You avoid them. You rebuke them. You shame them. Because if you if you do anything other than that, you're going to become a simp. Straight up. And, I, and you do not want to be a simp. We're going to rise from simp to pimp. That's what we're doing in this video. You see, Creed, he had to learn a new style. You know, just like I had to learn a new style, you know, because we were all taught when we were younger, hey, this is how you treat uh, women. And, and we were all taught how to treat a virtuous woman, but they never taught us how to treat a hoe. You know, they taught us, hey, here's how you treat a virtuous woman. You buy her flowers, you open the door for her, you pay for the date, you know. But if you're fighting Drago, if you're fighting um, a hoe, Right? You know what I'm saying? You need to learn a whole new style. This ain't a virtuous woman. You don't buy the hoe flowers. You don't pay for her date. You know what I'm saying? You give her the stiff arm. You give her the Heisman. You know? And if it's the world, the internet, you click that X button. You get out of there. You know what I'm saying? You turn your eyes away if they're, you see them walking around in the street. These little thotties in, in, in the gym. You, you don't even look at them. You know what I'm saying? That's how you treat a hoe. You don't even give them any of your time or attention. You see, Creed had to learn this new style, too. You know, he had to learn how to fight toe-to-toe, -to -toe, go jab for jab, go hard in the paint, go punch for punch. You know what I'm saying? He had to learn a whole new style. He had to learn how to take a punch. He had to learn that if he was going to defeat Drago, he had to learn how to take a hit in order to give a hit. You know, in order to give that knockout punch, he had to learn how to take a punch. You know? And that's what I had to learn. You know, I had to learn how to take a hit. And, and that's what you guys need to learn. In order to rise from simp to pimp, you have to learn to take a hit. To take your fear of being alone and squash it. You know, you guys have, you, you guys are sometimes weak. You know, all of us guys. Me too. You know, and, and to say no to sex, that's a hit sometimes, right? To say no to looking at that thotty over there. With the, with the big old booty in your face, right? To say, I'm not going to look at that. That's taking a hit, right? Because you don't want to do that. But you got to take that hit, right? Because, you know, sometimes we feel like we're missing out. You know, if we don't look at that hoe. If we don't click on that little pop-up ad on our computer, right? Or, or you know, we feel like we're going to miss out on something. But, you know, we have to learn how to take that punch. We have to say... No, like when a when a hoe invites us in for a freebie and says, "Here, just take a free look at me. Take a free look at my booty. Look how good it is. How juicy you want it, don't you?" You have to learn how to take that hit and say, "Nope, don't want it. Not gonna even look at it." And you know what? If you if you don't resist that temptation to look, that's like you stepping into the ring, you know. And and and, and if you don't take that hit, you won't be able to beat him. You know what I'm saying? Just like just like Creed wasn't able to beat Drago, you know? Just like me, you know, no matter how, you know, I had to learn. You know, I had to learn no matter how cute she is, no matter how good or easy she is, you know, how, no matter how sweet she is, right? If she ain't a God-fearing woman, if she a hoe, stay away from her. 
Don't even look at her. She ain't worth your time. You know, all these hoes you see on the internet, all these thotties you see walking around with their tight little yoga pants, they're just tempting you. They're provoking you. That's what they're doing. They're inviting you, saying, I dare you to resist me. I dare you to take this punch that I'm about to give you. And you have to just feel the pain and say, bring it. Bring it. I have no problem looking away from you. I have no problem going without sex. I'll take the hit. No problem. What, what else you got to throw at me? I'm the champ. I can take a hit. You know what I mean? That's what Creed had to learn. He had to learn how to take a hit. And you know, you think you're getting away with something by, by, by taking a peek, right? You're not. You're not. That's a setup. That's the setup that's going to get you knocked out. You know what I'm saying? You got to overcome that fear. The fear of being alone. The fear of going without sex. The fear of looking away from the hoe. Fearing like, oh man, I might miss the titties. Don't. It's a trick. It's a trick. You got to take that hit. You got to take it. And, and here's the key. Because it's going to set you up for a counter hit. It's going to set you up. If you take the hit, if you look away, you turn the porn off, if you if you don't give that hoe the time of day, now you're set up for a counter punch, right? Because they can't hit you as strong as you can hit them. And we're going to get to this, but I, I did want to mention this, you know. The Bible says that it's better to be alone in the wilderness than to, than to dwell um, with an angry and contentious woman. You know what I'm saying? So the Bible says it's better to just be alone than if than with if you're with a hoe. Basically, that's what it's saying. So, number 2, what else did Creed have to do? He had to learn a new style, right? So not only did he have to learn how to take a hit, but he also had to learn how to give a hit. So if you guys are going to rise from sin to pimp, you have to learn a new style. You have to learn how to not treat a hoe like a housewife. You have to learn how to go toe to toe, take that hit. You see a hoe in the street, Instead of calling her out, this is how you counterattack, right? You shame her. Instead of cat calling her, shame her. Say, tell her, hey, you dress like a hoe. You are dressed like a hoe. You know, you see, I had to learn how to go toe to toe with the hoe, right? You see, a hoe, she's gonna try to shame you. It, it, like, she's gonna say, oh, well, you don't make enough money. Uh, or you're not very good looking anyways, right? Or she uh, she gonna make she might make fun of you. Oh, you're a virgin. You're single, right? You you can't get no woman, right? She gonna try to tempt you with her body. She gonna do everything. She gonna be like, oh, you know you want this. Look at this fine, look at these fine titties and and booty, right? She, that's all temptation. That's all her throwing punches at you. And if you can and if you could block all that. You can set yourself up for a counterattack, and, and and the way you counterattack is you hit them back. You hit them back with um with preaching against what they're doing, you know, um, because if you're not prepared to take those punches, um, you won't be prepared to dish out your knockout punch, and your knockout punch is gonna uh, uh she's going she's more afraid of that. She's more afraid of that. You see, and, and it reminds me of when Jesus. You know, Jesus was tempted in the desert by the devil, right? And every time uh, the devil would say, hey, you thirsty? You want a drink of water? Jesus would say, man does not live off bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God, right? You see, when, when, when you see a hoe dressed in, in a revealing outfit, you know, quote her scripture, just like Jesus did. That's your counter punch, you know? Tell her, hey, the Bible says that a woman shouldn't put on a man's garment. So why are you walking around butt naked uh, wearing those yoga pants? Or why are you wearing those tight revealing clothing? You know, the Bible says not to braid your hair with costly array, you know, and, and show off your body. But to be shamefacedness and, 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 and be humble, you know, and meek and quiet spirit. You know, memorize your scriptures. You know, you got to know how to counterattack their temptations with scripture. You know, you need to learn how to throw a counter punch. That's what I'm saying. You know, sex outside of marriage, that's a sin. You need to memorize that one. Pornography, that's a sin. You need to memorize that one. You know, looking after, just looking at a woman with lust in your eyes, that's a sin. You know, if you need to study the Bible. If you're going to throw these counter attacks, if you're going to tell them, hey, this is what you're doing is wrong and I'm going to call it out. You need to know your Bible. You need to know what's right and wrong. So when she's tempting you, you know how to counter it with Scripture, and you can avoid her. You can avoid it. You know that's how you become a threat. You know that's 
And, and, and that gets me to the climax of the movie. You know, when Creed just kept getting knocked down, he just kept getting back up, right? He just kept getting back up. And Rocky told him in, in, in one of the final scenes, he said, go take him out because you're dangerous. You're dangerous. Remember in the, in the beginning when he said, don't mess with this guy because uh, he doesn't have nothing to lose and he's dangerous? He said, you learned a new style. You're dangerous now. You know, you know how to counterattack him better. You know how to knock him out. You have the knockout punch. Um, you know how to take a hit, right? You have more heart than him, you know? And, 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 it's, and it's not because he, he's more dangerous because he has anything to lose. You know, that's Drago. Drago's dangerous because he's a fool and he ain't got nothing to lose and he'll play dirty, you know? But Creed, he learned how to take a hit. He learned how to counterattack. And so I'm going to, I'm going to give a summary. I'm going to give a summary because my video is coming up on 30 minutes and uh, I didn't want to go this long, but this is, you know, this is a good message, but what can we learn? How to rise from simp to pimp? You know, the first thing we need to do is we need to get our mind right. We need to renew our mind, uh, which means don't throw in the towel or excuse me, don't be afraid to throw in the towel. Right? Don't be afraid to turn off the pornography. Don't be afraid to look away from the hose when you see him walking around in the street. Because this fear, this fear is going to cause you to step into the ring. You know, the ring that you have no business being in. You know, because remember, if you step in that ring, that hose is going to fight dirty. She's going to throw low blows. You know, you have no business being in the ring. Just stay away from them. You don't need to step into the pigsty if you are not a pig. You feel me? That's what I'm saying. Two, what else did we learn? If you're gonna rise from simp to pimp, you gotta learn how to take a hit. You know, when these hoes try to shame you for being single, for being broke, um, or, or they try to say, well, you're not gonna get any, I'm gonna deprive you of sex. You know, you have to learn how to take that pain. You have to learn how to expect that pain and, and embrace it and say, go, go ahead, <laughs> give me your best shot. Give me your best shot, I ain't afraid of it. You know what I mean? And lastly, if you're gonna rise from simp to pimp, you need to learn how to throw that knockout punch. That knockout punch, you need to learn what the Bible says. You need to learn how to call these hoes out on their whoredom, you know? Or, or, or whatever wickedness that they're involved in, whether it be the way they're dressed or, or, their, or their, um, their rebellious attitude or, or um, them rejecting God. Whatever, 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 um, the, whatever they're doing that's wrong, you need to learn how to call them out on that BS and, and not hold back. Don't hold back your punches. Don't sugarcoat your preaching. You need to go full bore ahead and throw that knockout punch. Quote that scripture word for word and let them know what's up. You know, so anyway, that's my video, guys. I don't I don't want to uh, make this an hour-long video and message, but I think you guys get the, get the point. Um, how to rise from simp to pimp, you know? Never treat a hoe like a virtuous woman. That's going to make you a simp, you know? And then that's going to get you injured because they don't play fair. They do not play fair. Remember, a hoe, she ain't got nothing to lose. She ain't got nothing to lose, so she don't care about cheating, lying, stealing. It don't matter to her, right? And they're dangerous. They will hurt you. They will hurt you, leave you broke, beaten, and, and, and they won't care. They will not care if, you, if they send you to the hospital, you know? But if you're going to rise from simp to pimp, if you want to be the champ... You got to learn how to be dangerous for all the right reasons. You got to learn how to fight with honor. Mama said, knock you out. <laughs> anyway, that's my video for the day, guys. That's my message. I hope you learned something. Um, I sure learned a lot from the movie Creed. Uh, maybe you could check it out. Great movie. Um, anyway, hopefully, hopefully you guys learned something and I'll be praying for you guys. And um, just remember, uh, just remember, uh, before David became king and he fought Goliath, he didn't beat Goliath because he was stronger. He beat him because he obeyed the commandments of God and God was with him and God defeated Goliath. So if you're going to be a champ, you might want to consider uh, doing what David did and follow the commandments and have God fight your battles. Um, anyway, that's my message. This is Sean Elvis signing off. And... Um, Go out there and fight the good fight, gentlemen. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Um, peace out. And as always, 
giving God the last word. Here we go. Um, reading from 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, verses 45 through 51. God bless. Uh, the Bible says, Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hands, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, unto the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know there is the God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know the Lord saveth not with the sword and the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to David, David hastened and he ran towards the army to the Philistine. And David put his hand into his bag and took out a stone and he slang it and he smote the Philistine right between the eyes and the forehead and the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon the face of the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with one stone, and smote the Philistine, and slew him. And there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David stood over the Philistine, and took his sword. He drew it out of the sheath thereof, and he slew him, and he cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Amen.